let's start. So what we covered yesterday, this is what we are discussing with distributed switch, how to create, how to configure, how to add the host into distributed switch and how we can create a multiple port groups within the distributed switch. And we have also seen a couple of things, uh, how it will be replicated into each host, the configuration I'm talking about. Okay. Those are those are few things we discussed. Also, we discussed a couple of scenarios called one single point of failure, which shouldn't happen with the VMware due to a distributed switch that we discussed. So today, what we are going to do, we're going to do small migration. We call it as live migration in the sense. Servers will be up and running. Okay, let me build a scenario like this. Take the same example which we did yesterday. Okay, so we have, I'm sorry, take us some bigger picture. You have three hosts, right? You have three hosts configured and with. I'm sorry, configure with I'm not going to represent the kernel port switch. Okay, I'm more interested in port groups today because we are not touching the kernel port anymore. We'll see if time permits after the after this test, we'll discuss more about kernel port migration and stuff. But you have one port group here. Which port group? This is standard switch, right? V S S V Spear standard switch. It has three port groups. And you have some of the VMs here. I guess three VMs are there and two of them connected on this. One is connected on a different port group. This is the existing configuration right so what we are going to do we are going to create one more vm here and put it on this vlan also you have same configuration over here but i haven't created any virtual machines let's create three three vms at least on each host three vms on each host and let's assign some of the ip addresses okay so i'll put everything on different VLANs or different port groups I'll say okay so let's draw the imagine there is a kernel port here don't forget okay this is again vSPR standard switch vSPR standard switch how many port groups again three port groups and one VM here, VM here, one VM running on this. So what we did, we have configured, imagine, all are connected on a switch. It is not a single switch, remember, customer is accessing from this side. Remember, this is not the one switch, Multiple switches based on the high availability. This is also connected. Right. like this what we did all the three hosts are managed via vCenter and vCenter has one distributed switch with two uplinks okay and it has some four or five port groups 
right? So this we configure. So what happens when you configure this, it will automatically deploy switch here when you add a host into distributed switch. This we discussed yesterday, remember? Okay. Yes, yes. Scenario will take some time to test, but I want to do this test in live systems. Means systems are up and running, customers are using it. And then, see, this is how it looks like. What is this? VDS, VSphere Distributed Switch. Okay, so if end users or customers accessing okay okay users are accessing the machines or their production workloads over this like if if this vm you want to access so the traffic will come here and it will come with any of this cable and he can access it right now the aim is we are sending the data over these two cables okay now you have a standard switch i want to migrate these vms onto distributor switch like this like this understood means if a customer is trying to access the same machine, this goes via these two cables and the traffic will come via distributed switch. Okay, but I want to make sure this should happen without any downtime in customer environment. Means customer should not know or should not face any issues while doing the migration. This you call it as live migration from standard networking to distributed networking. Any real time scenarios for this? If you can give me some example. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> any real sorry, I'm I'm asking about any real time scenarios that you guys come across. Can think of Hello. I'm asking, can you think of any real-time scenarios with this? <clears throat> so, I'll explain one scenario later on. Meanwhile, let's start the testing.
see <coughs> so distributed switch is already created vlan triple line it's of no use there is no there is no such vlan I, for the namesake i have created yesterday right is there any physical vlan is there any physical vlan with the name called triple line or with, with, the, with the ip range what we have mentioned here let's see vlan management vlan settings so there is no triple line vlan right so what i will do i'll remove this so we have 10 20 30 40 four different vlans but in in standard switch see the di difference between a standard switch ports uh, port groups and a di distributed switch port groups I i'm just i'm just <coughs> showing the uh, graphical representation okay so looks like both are having different icons right so let's use this for today we'll use this because depreciated in you know, we recommend to switching all the new modern html fire based with the client primary client and we're reverting the flash based and it's okay so what i will do i have three different esxi host on this host how many vms are running we have three vms okay and let's go to networks we have both distributed as well as standard right three standard and four distributed port groups okay now on vlan 10 two vms are running two vms are running on vlan 20 one vm is running what i will do windows server i'll put it on vlan 30 edit <clears throat> now if you look at you have all the port groups vds also there if you select the vds show more networks it is also as everything so i'll put it on vlan 40 i'm sorry my bad i'll put it on vlan 40. go back to the first on the first host you see three see on the first host I'm not really sorry okay you see one two three port groups are there on each port group you have one one VM running it means on the first host if we go to picture this one right go to this picture forget about this I'm sorry. Forget about that. You have three VMs. All the three VMs are running on three different VLANs. Let me remove this aside. Okay. So you have a three VMs in three different port groups. Okay. Let me create the same setup on the other host as well how to do that let's let's do it quickly so one missing part is no storage let me add some storage uh, we'll discuss this with data stores and all later on local 02 local 03 okay on on the both the host i have created some data store from the local storage okay now clone machine vm4 
put it on second host okay i'll put it on second host and the local data store customize hardware i'll put on vlan 10 okay clone virtual machine vm5 right i need <coughs> vms on each host and each vlan as well customize this is on vlan 20 finish and vm6 on second host this on the same data store imagine it is on vlan 40. if i want i can put directly on the distributory switch as well but I want to show you the migration, not the VLAN, how you how you place the VMs in uh, different VLANs and stuff. Clone. VM7. Put it on third host. VLAN 40, it's okay. VM8 and the third host it looks like it is very simple but assigning IP address will take a huge time man so let's do it quickly VM9 last one let me see on which VLAN the VMs are missing here And forty. All the VMs running on VLAN port forty, seven and eight. Edit settings twenty. Twenty. Okay, now I need one VM on VLAN 10, that's it. VM 9. Guys, following? Or just watching the movie? Hello? Yeah, I'm asking you guys are following me or just watching the movie? But actually, uh, I'm working also simultaneously side by side, so <laughs> it's becoming difficult to understand the things. Yeah, <clears throat> see, just concentrate. So far, I just built the lab. We'll do the testing now, okay? So, what I did, if you look at this picture, if you look at this picture, very simple. You have a vCenter, you have a distributed switch, right? You have configured all these things. And what I did, I created three, three VMs on each each host. Host 1, 3 VMs, host 2, 3 VMs, host 3, 3 VMs. Everything is running on standard switch, standard switch, standard switch. So I will assign different, different IP addresses to these machines. Okay, respect to VLAN, In I mean, so if this is VLAN 10, 20, 40, right? So what I will do, I'll, I'll assign the respect to IP addresses. So let me do it quickly. VM1 10 dot sorry 192 168 10 dot 101 imagine VLAN1 VM 
or else we land 10 VMs. How to identify? I'll show you. We land 10 VM2. 192.168.10.102. This is done. Okay. So 20, 20, 20. Same IPS I'll give. You're getting my point? These are the IPS which I'm going to assign to each and every virtual machine. VLAN, sorry. <coughs> I agree with this numbers. Yeah. Hmm? Now, all these VMs are running on standard networking or standard switch. Now, I want to migrate these VMs onto distributed switch. Means earlier, when customer is trying to access, he is accessing like this. Now I am saying I will do migration like this. When the customer is accessing, he will access like this. That is only the difference. Okay. Means with existing standards which is having some issues, difficulties, management is difficult, day to day operations is very difficult. And uh, if, if you want to change something, you need to take a lot of approvals and stuff. These things are there. So if you, if you migrate these into distributed switch, okay, because you have an enterprise plus license and you can use this feature. So let's start using it. Let's do the migration. Okay. So it will take five to 10 minutes for me to assign these nine IP addresses to nine machines because the graphical user interface won't work properly. Okay. So you guys can watch it. Once the IP assignment is done, then we, we can start migrating the things. Ping 192.168.10.101. It's not pinging. So how to assign the IP address? Go to, uh, what I'll do, I'll select all the machines and I power on at once. All are powered on. See, I powered on all the machines. Now, the difficult part is I want to identify on on uh, each cluster, sorry, on a cluster level. Cluster, cluster level networks. You have VLAN 10. Uh, 3 VMs, VLAN 20, 3 VMs, VLAN 40, 3 VMs, right? right? Overall 9 VMs. I'll pick all the VLAN 10 VMs first. VLAN 10, VM4, VM9, and VM1, Windows Server 1, which is running on 10. So, how to assign the IP address? Open console, remote console. Okay, so how to assign control panel 192.168.10.101 What is the gateway? 10.1 If you want to send the traffic to Google, use this. So assign the IP, minimize this. You see, started pinging. Machine is started pinging. Okay, so 102. We can close this out and this is second machine, right? One ninety two one sixty eight ten dot one zero two gateway is one again yes. done so close this out 
see started pinging 103 for fourth machine One zero three. Done. Close this out. One zero three is also pinging. Similarly, I have to assign IPs for another six machines. Meanwhile, let me close this remote consoles. Twenty. Linux server one. Open console. Sixty-eight twenty dot one zero one. Right. Then close. Third one. One zero three. Done. Pause this out. Let's see. Pinging. 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 Right. Now, again, let me close this out. Go to VLAN 40. The problem is, these are the these are these VMs are very very small, tiny VMs. Okay, if you assign IP, it will start functioning. If you reboot it, you will lose the configuration. Okay, so be careful if you guys want to do the practice. 40.101 is done. Zero two. Okay, last one. Sixty eight, forty dot one zero three. Done. Okay, so let's see. Pinging. Pinging. Ping. Now, how the traffic is going now? See, I'm the user. I have my laptop from my laptop. 
what is my IP? 192.168.1.140. Let's say 141. Okay. Now today I have connected through Wi-Fi, so I got the DHCP IP. If I connect it through the LAN cable, I'll get some static IP. That's different. Okay. So ping 192.168.10.101. This is the VM somewhere on ESXi host, one of the VM, this one, let's say. So trace RT 192.168.10.101. Doesn't make any difference because you'll get it in two hops. Third hop, you go to the destination. It will go to Wi-Fi router. From Wi-Fi router, it will go to switch. From switch, it will go to respective VM. done got it now even if you are moving from standard switch to distributed switch there is no difference in trace route because from here from my laptop to there is a wi-fi router from wi-fi router it is connected to switch so what is the ip for this 192 168 1.100 what is the ip for this 192.168.1.1 got it <clears throat> so i want to migrate these machines from these standard switch one two three two distributed switch so how to do that you go to distributed switch right click migrate vms from another network Migrate VMs from another network. So here you need to select specify the source network from where you are you want to migrate. I'll say standard port groups, distributed port groups. Please remember carefully. Okay. I'll select standard and from where you want to migrate, destination is distributed. VLAN 10. If I put it on VLAN 20, what will happen? It will not ping, right? Because respect to VLANs, it should be missed. Let's let's do the test. What I will do? Ping 192.168.110.101. Only one machine I'll migrate. Okay, but by mistakely, if I place it in VLAN 20, what happens? Let's see. I'm saying from VLAN 10, from standard port group VLAN 10 to distributed port group VLAN 20, which is wrong, still we'll go ahead and do it. Next, I will not migrate all the machines. I will not migrate all the machines. Let's see what is this. Okay. I don't know for which server I gave the 101. Right? It's hard to remember. I'll ping all of them. What happens? One should go. Array or one should stop pinging 10.103. So now all the three machines are pinging, right? All the three machines are pinging. I'll select the first one next right? because if I select all the three, you will lose connectivity for all the three. I don't want to impact multiple customers at a single time or multiple customers with my mistake. So what I will do first, I want to make sure whether I'm doing it correctly or not. This process you call it as POC proof of concept in technical words means you are make you are as an expert expert. You are make make sure make you have to make sure what I can say. Yeah, you have to make sure things will work properly for that. You will do some proof of concept work in the back end before you implement anything in the production. You, are you aware of this process? Have you heard of this term? POC? POC. Okay. That, that will, will explain later on. Let's consider this as a POC. I am doing it for one machine. Next. Finish. The moment I click finish, you will see one should start responding. See? 101 is gone. The rest, of, rest two all working. 101 is gone. Yes, yes. 
means if you go to if you go to v center and on vlan 10 only two vms left out of three one is gone if we go to app distributed switch app vlan 20 vms you'll see one vlan came here but by mistakely it came here because it should be in vlan 10 you you migrated into vlan 20 that that messed up and customer is facing downtime now because you said i am going to migrate the machine from one network to another network okay this won't impact anything normally what you people do vivek and sunil what you people do if you want to do some changes you will open the crq change request and you will you will write down the all the steps what you are doing to perform agree or disagree now installation plan migrate implementation plan backout plan right in that you have mentioned saying no customer downtime now there is a downtime what you will justify you getting my point yeah okay so in this case what we will do we'll simply revert it back was something wrong let me do one thing let me migrate back to original migrate where is the source source is app vlan 20 destination is vlan 10 in the standard network only one vm which is running next finish list now it will start pinging again see okay thank god i, I made some mistake now it is reverted okay cancel the change we'll plan it for next weekend you understood what i'm trying to say yes yes okay now you need to properly plan it otherwise multiple customers will impact due to these kind of changes because you are moving the machines bulk in bulk okay so what will what what is the what went wrong actually from vlan 10 which is in standard network to vlan 10 which is in distributed network i need to migrate to respect to vlans only so first you need to make a list of things what needs to be done standard to distributed vlan 10 what is the vlan name here web underscore vlan 10 is the destination for this you should know this web underscore vlan 10 is the destination vlan 20 app underscore vlan 20 is the destination vlan 30 there is no vlan 30 here class law uh, yes sir vlan 40 so dmz underscore vlan 40 vlan 30 is not there here okay but customer asked me can you please create a vlan 30 because in future i'm going to use it so what i did db underscore vlan 30 i have created here if you look at here db underscore vlan 30 is created it's fine so in short your change covers crq covers three migrations plus one new port group which is vlan 30 you have to create a new port group means you are modifying the switch if you are modifying the switch you need to have a change right this is the plan understood okay let's go ahead and do the migration from vlan 10 to web vlan 10 you know you will see after the migration you will not face any issues all these three servers should start pinging there's no there's no downtime how to do that select the distributed switch migrate from vlan 10 which is from standard network to web vlan 10 which is from vds if if there is nothing here means standard next select all the three machines 
how many VMs you will have in your real time? You will have in your lab, you have three hosts. I've tested for, I've created a test machines, three test machines. In your real time, you will have a hundreds of hosts and around hundreds of VMs in the same VLAN. So if you made a mistake, hundreds of VMs will go down. You getting my point? Okay, so be very careful. Finish. Then, see, you will not see any ping loss. You will not see any ping loss. All the machines are running. Right? Just a fraction of milliseconds. Milliseconds delay while migrating. So, means what I did. I did remember. VLAN 10, one machine, I migrated here. VLAN 10, one machine, I migrated here. VLAN 10, one machine, I migrated here. Like this. Getting my point? Let me do it yes. for the VLAN 20. So 20.102, it's pinging. Twenty dot one zero three, it's pinging. 20 dot 101 also ping. Okay, all the three are working. So let me do the migration for VLAN 20. Right click on the distributed switch, migrate from standard VLAN 20 to distributed VLAN 20, app VLAN. 20. Okay, next, all the three VMs which are running on VLAN 20, finish. That's it, done. Now you'll see all the three VMs are running without any issue. There's no downtime at all. Okay, let's see or how, how you make sure whether these are migrated or not. If you go to VLAN 20 VMs, you'll see three VMs. If you go to standard VLAN, VLAN 20, all are gone. But VLAN 10, all are gone. VLAN 40, you still see three VMs. So once we migrate these three, you should see all these VMs will migrate it to DMZ VLAN 40 here. You should see the VMs are coming up here. So how to, let's do the migration for the last one as well. Anyway, we are sure that nothing nothing is impacted so far. So I'm not testing anything now or else only I'll test one machine. 40.101. It's swinging. Okay, so we run 40. DMZ, we run 40. Next, we'll see all the three VMs. They will migrate onto we run 40 now. So if you come here, all the VMs are coming. Okay. Let it reload. Some issue. It's okay. So we run 40. Where is we run 40? VMs. You will see all the VMs are populated here. And we run 10 VMs. Sorry, on the standardness, standard switch. Nothing. 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 So, see, we are on 40 is pinging without an issue. Now, I have migrated everything onto distributed switch from standard switching. So, what is the purpose of this switch now? Is there any use of this switch? Hello? Not, not now. Okay, there is no use with this switch. There is no use with this switch. There is no use with this switch. Can I remove these three switches so that I'll get these two cables free? Yes. These two cables, I'll get it free. So how to do that? Let me go to each host. Each host. Now you look at distributed switch. On on a distributed switch, you'll see one one VM running on one one port group. You see? And minimize this. Go to standard switch. 
kernel port anyway we are not touching this minimize this second one standard switch zero vms zero vms zero vms nothing is running on this okay so you can simply remove the switch switch is gone on the second host distributed switch one 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 vm three vms are running and on the standard switch the port groups are empty select remove the switch okay if you go to physical adapters now switch these two cables are used for switch zero kernel port and these two cables are used for distributed switch and two on three i've, I've removed the switch so it got free now okay if you go to third host you'll see all the six are occupied but if i go to switches distributed switch you have a production running okay standard switch zero kernel port is running okay standard switch one there's nothing running this is not okay remove it gone now you go to physical adapters you see these two cables are free understood what i did so far and you understood why i needed six cables in the previous sessions i said blindly add six cables and we'll see what is the significance of six cables now you got you got the some idea why we need these many cables why we are using it okay nice understood or everything is on air over the head tell me something i understood gone okay so what is, what is the scenario vivek you there hello yeah yes, i'm there actually i'm on yeah, another call okay. so yeah okay yeah let's let's understand one simple scenario why we need to do this so you have one host i'm not representing all the six host sorry all the three host imagine you have two cables and you have two more cables and you have two more cables so this is ideally the configuration is like this Okay, switch one, switch two. Ideally, the configuration is like this. Switch one, switch two. And you have one more set of switches. Okay, I'm explaining. Well, you can, you can build your own scenarios like this. One and two. These are physical switches I'm talking about. Why you need a two two switches? Because of you need redundancy, right? So you have VPN somewhere, and everything is routed to here only. There's no other alternative. Everything is routed to VPN. Customer is accessing like this. Now I'll say. These two are management purpose means VMware admins or employees who are responsible for managing the VMware infrastructure. They will use this kernel port. Now I said I have one more network called standard switch. You have some port groups and some VMs are running over here. like this right imagine you have two kind of setups one is one is 1 GB network another one is 10 GB normally people call it as copper networking 10 GB network 
means customer is looking at upgrading their network from 1 GB to 10 GB Ethernet. If you want, you can simply Google it. 1, 1 GB versus 10 GB Ethernet. You see? This is 10 GB cable. So this is fiber cable. Fiber cable. Okay, let me show you. 1 GB. Ethernet. So this is normal 1 GB Ethernet ports and you, you'll have your normal cables, right? What do you? These are normal cables, right? Which you will use it in your home as well, anywhere. RJ45. Like Cat6. Cat6, right? Cat6. This supports 1 GBPS. But there are some other There are some other cables, like, oh, I'm sorry. Some other cables like this. You'll see cables or ports like this. Black cables. Fiber, total. No, 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 not the fiber. It's not the fiber, copper. These are copper cables. This supports 10 GB Ethernet. Okay, so you'll see modules like this and 10 GB switch module also, something called like this. You'll see 10 GB ports like this. Okay. Normal Ethernet ports, normal Ethernet ports looks like this and 10 GB, imagine 10 GB SFPs, you'll see like this. So you can insert that module in, inside this port. So in this picture, imagine this is 10 GB network, newly built 10 GB network. Means you have a 10 GB ports here and 10 GB switches. These two are 10 GB switches and from here, you have a VPN connectivity which is also supports around 10 GB or something. Okay, imagine. And you created distributor switch. Okay. And connected like this. Now, previously customer is using this which is 1 GB network. Now customer want to upgrade their network to 10 GB. What you can do? You can have a physical connectivity, physical cabling and stuff. You need to properly plan it and on 1 GB network you have around 20 or 30 or 200, 500, how many number of VLANs based on the customer size. You can, you need to create all those VLANs on to do the cabling like this and create a distributor switch with the proper port group notations. Okay, now once this is done. So you can simply point these VMs to here. What I did so far, migration, live migration. You remove the switch. Now, earlier these VMs are communicating over 1 GB channel. Now these VMs will start communicating over 10 GB channel. This is how you will upgrade your network from 1 GB to 10 GB. When the, when the network team is doing backend network upgrade, how you will migrate your VMs without any downtime from one network to another network so that customer will see the fastness. You're getting my point? I have represented this for one host. If you have n number of hosts, the procedure is remain same. But the thing is, you need to make sure these port groups and the trunk ports and the on the physical networking side, everything is properly configured. If someone someone did some mistake at the physical level or at the VM level while, while creating the distributed switch or while creating the physical port groups or adding the uh, trunk, uh, trunk VLANs or VLAN tagging at each port, if someone did some mistake, then you will see unwanted downtimes in customer environment because you are planning to migrate large number of VMs from one host to, an, sorry, one network to another network. Understood? The same thing, the same scenario, procedure will not change. Whatever the steps that I did, it will not change. Whatever the things that I documented for the change implementation plan will not change. Only thing is the impact you cannot predict. 
if it is a bigger environment, you need to be 100% sure you are not doing any mistake. If it is small environment, it's fine. You request the customer hang on for two minutes. I'll change it. You can simply change it. If you're working for a big and big customer's environment or bigger infrastructure, you have to be very careful while doing this kind of activity. Okay, got it? Yes. Any questions? No? Good? All right, let me stop here.